एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू जोमियो क्लासरूम आई एम डॉक्टर तराना मलिक एंड आई एम बैक अगेन विद एन इंटरेस्टिंग केस टू डिस्कस दिस टाइम टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अ केस ऑफ हाइपोथाइरोइडिज्म एंड सीइंग हाउ होम्योपैथिक मेडिसिन कैन हेल्प द पेशेंट टू एन एक्सटेंट दैट वी कैन टेपर ऑफ द कॉमनली यूज एलोपैथिक मेडिकेशंस for hypothyroidism it is a general belief in patients that if they are on medications for thyroid they will have to take it for life long but the beauty of homeopathy is such that with the right remedy in a very short span of time we can make the patients completely stop the medication let us see how we did that in this case so this is a case of a 35 year old woman who came to us with a chief complaint of weight gain she was very disturbed and she told us that her weight has increased from 50 kg to 75 kg in just a span of one year so imagine 25 kg of weight gain in a year is huge is massive and obviously it is going to mentally as well as physically affect the patient considering the patient was fit she was 50 kg and from then she has now moved on to 75 kg suddenly so this will have a strong impact on the patient moving on she also gave us the history that she did not get her periods since the past 4 months there was bloating there was acidity she told us that no matter what she eats either she eat or she does not eat there is a constant sense of bloating as well as burning in the chest which is present which gets aggravated post eating anything and everything okay next she gave us the history that she has hoarseness of voice she said that while i am talking suddenly my voice becomes hoarse and this gets worse on voice exertion or when she talks a lot the patient was a diagnosed case of hypothyroidism when she came to us she was taking thyronorm 200 once a day since the past 3 years but since a year the symptoms had worsened and in spite of the use of thyronorm in spite of increasing the strength of thyronorm the symptoms did not go away and her condition was only worsening the patient had carried her recent thyroid reports with her and she showed us that the tsh was 8.48 now the normal range is still 5 and here in spite of taking thyronorm 200 every day the tsh was still 8.48 okay so this is a lot of increase in the tsh and obviously all the symptoms that she told us when it comes to bloating amenorrhea weight gain hoarseness everything is related to this increase in the tsh levels i hope you have a pen and a paper with you or your software with you where you are noting down the symptoms as i describe the case moving on we have a look at her as a person now this patient her face was puffy it appeared to be swollen and there was a very peculiar sad or a gloomy look on her face and while we were taking her case we felt that she was very disinterested in everything she was saying when we were asking her stuff but she did not really want to interact or talk her appetite was good she ate well there was no significant aggravation or amelioration from any food or drink there was a very strong desire for salt and at the same time she told us that she cannot stand sweets she had a very marked aversion to sweets her thirst was normal she had room temperature water which was about 8 to 10 glasses in a day 
while describing her bowel habits she told us that she experiences occasional constipation there are times when she does not pass stools for 2 to 3 days at a stretch or even when she passes stools she feels that she has to strain a lot now if you see this symptom again can be correlated to her state of hypothyroidism there was no complaints in urine or perspiration the perspiration was non staining and non offensive her sleep was refreshing she slept for 7 to 8 hours and she told us that she woke up fresh in the morning she had dreams that were not significant and she said that most of the times she doesn't even remember them now the menstrual history she already gave us that she told us that there was absence of menses since the past 4 months however when a patient tells us about the amenorrhea we must look into the pattern of menses in order to spot any previous irregularities or any symptom that can guide us to some diagnosis now here we know that the patient has hypothyroidism but amenorrhea could also be because of other causes in spite of hypothyroidism being present in the patient which is why taking the menstrual history in detail is extremely important so the patient told us that before these 4 months she got her menses regularly her cycles were regular which were of 28 to 30 days there were no clots present there was absolutely normal bleeding of red color it was not dark there was no odor and she never experienced any menstrual problem in the past the patient had two kids the first one was a 7 year old boy and the second kid was a 4 year old girl both of them were full term normal deliveries and she told us that both her pregnancies were quite good she did not face any trouble during the pregnancy moving on thermally the patient told us she does not like fan at all even in the clinic as soon as she entered she requested us to switch off the fan as well as the air conditioning she told us that she does like summer but she does not like when there is a lot of air or it's very chilly she bathes with hot water and covering was required throughout the year she said i cannot sleep without taking a blanket so this makes her a chilly patient there were no significant complaints from light noise touch jarring motion or now moving on to her family history and personal history she told us that her parents both of them had a history of extreme acidity they were on medications for acidity and they also had an issue of constipation she herself did not have any other illness except for hypothyroidism which was only present since the past 3 years otherwise she told us that she has never been to a doctor she was never admitted to a hospital she never had to take any long term treatment which is why this constant medication and treatment for hypothyroidism that she was taking was bothering her because for someone who's been healthy and then suddenly develops a condition which requires you to take a medicine daily can be really disturbing now let us have a look at her mind symptoms the patient told us that she lives with her children and works in an it company her job requires her to stay out of the house for most of the time when we asked her further to describe herself she started getting very sad and started weeping and told us that she had an unhappy marriage she had a abusive and non supportive mother in law and an unsympathetic husband she tried her best to make the marriage work 
but somehow things did not shape out well and they ended up separating. She clearly told us that she was very disappointed with this one particular instance of her life and this made her extremely sad and unhappy. Even though they separated a year ago, the patient was still very affected by all this and while describing the symptoms to us, she was constantly weeping. Since their separation, she now takes care of her children as the children stay with her. She told us that in order to support her children, she has to do this job and she has to work a lot and she has to work hard to make ends meet. As I told you all, she was constantly weeping about narrating the story. She said that ever since this has happened with me, I have become very sad. I have lost hope and now that I have this illness, I just feel that even this will never go away. So previously she was never like this as a person. But this incident of unhappy marriage, separation, too much responsibility has kind of made her sad. She does not enjoy life. She is constantly only working and worrying about supporting her children, how she can make their life better, how can she help their, her children and she has this constant uh, feeling that everything is bad and nothing is going to change, even in relation to her illness. The patient added that even though she is sad, she cannot see anyone suffering. She told us that I know that I am going through a lot of pain, but when I see someone else going through something similar or suffering, I do get affected. And I try to do whatever I can in my capacity to make that person feel better. Now, while we were taking her case, we noticed something very peculiar about this patient. So, when she was describing her likings, instead of saying, I dislike sweets, she said it as, I cis like tweets. And even while she was describing her mental symptoms, she used a word called like Nakka Paki, which is a slang or a Hindi word, which is a term used for in, uh, giving assurance to someone or a surety. So the right word is Pakka Naki, but she pronounced it, is, it as Nakka Paki, which is the absolute opposite of the word. Now this phenomenon, is particularly termed as spoonerism, wherein the person mismanages the words or mispronounces the words and they sound to be extremely opposite but still the one hearing it can make out or understand what the person is trying to convey. So this is one very peculiar trait that we noticed in this patient. Now moving on to the examination findings of this case. The, when the patient came to us, her temperature was afebrile, the pulse was 60 beats per minute, the respiratory rate was 12 breaths per minute, her blood pressure was 110 by 70 mm of Hg and there was no pallor, cyanosis and lymphadenopathy. However, we noticed bilateral pitting edema of the feet, which is again a common manifestation in hypothyroidism. And when we checked her weight, it was 75 kgs and her height was found to be 5 feet 1 inch. So you can imagine that she is a very short patient who is not tall enough and for that person to go from 50 kgs to 75 kgs. So she looked really um, healthy. If not obese, she looked like she was overweight. Her systemic examination, when we were checking her uh, respiration, her cardiovascular system, gastrointestinal system, as well as the central nervous system, there was nothing abnormal detected. Now, we already know that this patient is a diagnosed case of hypothyroidism. So, this 
makes this disease as the dynamic chronic miasmatic disease with fully developed symptoms according to the Hanemanian classification of disease. Now that we have discussed the case, I have described the physical particular symptom, the physical general symptoms, the mind symptoms. Let us have a look at the totality of this case. We took ailments from disappointment as the characteristic causation because the unhappy marriage and events related to the marriage had caused a lot of disappointment in the patient. And she told us that she was not like this before. Her mental state was absolutely different. And this uh, failed or unhappy marriage led to a lot of disappointment in her. Which is why ailments from disappointment becomes a characteristic causation. Moving on, while she was describing her problems to us, she was constantly weeping. So this makes it a characteristic mental emotional symptom. There was extreme sadness. The patient herself told us that she was sad. She did not like to do anything at all. So we've considered this in the totality and it makes it a characteristic mental emotional symptom. She was very sympathetic. This again becomes a characteristic mental emotional symptom. The next symptom we have considered in the totality is despair of recovery. Why? Because the patient was clearly telling us that she feels that her illness is never going to go away. So there was a lot of despair or hopelessness in this patient. Even though we know that hypothyroidism is not something that cannot be controlled, but the patient herself felt that this is not going to go away and I am never going to get better. Moving on, the next symptom we have considered is spoonerism, where she, wherein she was pronouncing certain words differently. So this makes it as a characteristic mental intellectual symptom. We have taken desire for salt and aversion to sweets as this becomes a characteristic physical general symptom. Now that we have the totality, we've listed down the symptoms. Let us convert these symptoms into rubrics. Now, ailments from disappointment is found under the mind chapter of complete repertory as disappointment, deception, aggravates, ailments from. Weeping is again found under the mind chapter of complete repertory as weeping, tearful mood. The next symptom we have is sadness. It is found as it is under the mind chapter of complete repertory. Moving on, sympathetic is found under the mind chapter of complete repertory as sympathetic, compassionate too. Despair of recovery is found under the mind chapter of complete repertory as despair recovery of. Spoonerism is found under the Fatox repertory. So when we searched for this rubric, it was only under the Fatox repertory and it is listed as it is as spoonerism. Desires for salt is listed in the generality section under food and drinks as salt or salty food desires in the complete repertory. And the last symptom which is aversion to sweets, it is again found in the generalities chapter under the section of food and drinks as sweets aversion in the complete repertory. Now that we have the rubrics, let us begin recording these symptoms and find out the indicated remedy using Homepath Zomeo. Now the first symptom that I want to record is ailments from disappointment. To record the symptom, I will press as Command S and here you can see 
a search repository pop up opens now this is a way of searching the repository in general wherein when i type certain keywords and click on search the repository is going to show me all the results through all the repertories in the software and which contain the keywords that i have entered so i want to look at this appointment ailments from so instead of typing the entire rubric i have typed the two important keywords which is disappointment and ailments after we click on search we see that the first result is the one that we wish to include which is disappointment deception aggravate ailments from to record it i will click in this box and this symptom is now recorded moving on the next symptom we have is weeping i will search for this symptom similarly by using command s option and type weeping in the search repository section and click on search so the first symptom that i have is from the mind chapter of complete repository that is weeping tearful mood it has 609 remedies i will record this symptom similarly we will record our next symptom which is sadness we will press command s and type sadness and click on search we will select the second symptom which is from the mind chapter of complete repository listed as sadness now we've totally recorded three symptoms from our totality which is ailments from disappointment weeping and sadness if we want to confirm whether these symptoms have been recorded or not we can go in the view repertorization option which is present on your left hand side in the toolbar as the first shortcut so these four small squares that you see is the shortcut for view repertorization option when i click on it you can see that our repertory sheet now opens alternatively you can also access it by the shortcut which is command r moving on the next symptom that i want to record is sympathetic now to record this symptom we can also click on the repository list and open the list of repertories so after we click on repository list on our left hand side we have the complete repository which is opened by default and we can see the chapters within the complete repository and the mind chapter is the one which is opened by default in case if you want to use any other repository you can minimize this complete repository by clicking on it and select the repository you wish to use you can also type in the chapter name in the search chapter tab and open the chapter through which you wish to record a symptom but now i want to use the mind chapter of complete repository so i will click on complete and the mind chapter opens by default so the symptom that i want to record from here is sympathetic now to search the symptom i will click on the search icon present on my extreme right which is internal search so through this search now we are searching for mind symptoms from the complete repository itself so when i will type my keyword the software will give me suggestions of the rubrics within this chapter which contain my keyword so i want to record sympathetic and now you can see there are 20 rubrics which are listed after i have typed sympathetic as a keyword however now for this case 
I want to record the very first rubric itself, which is sympathetic, compassionate two. I click in the box, and this symptom two is now recorded. Similarly, we will record the next symptom in our totality, which is despair of recovery. So for this, I will first clear this selection that I have typed. And now that I have cleared it, I will type despair of. So now you can see, even though I have not typed the entire rubric, I can see that the third search result is the rubric that I want to repertorize. To record this rubric, I will click in this box, and this symptom two is now recorded. Let us go back. to the view repertorization option and have a look at the symptoms we've just recorded so you can see we've recorded the mind symptom uh, which is disappointment ailments from weeping sadness sympathetic and despair of recovery we have one more and the most important symptom of our mind remaining which is spoonerism now to record this we can directly do it through the quick repertorization option which is present on top of my repertorization sheet you can also access the quick repertorization option by pressing command f now here the difference is when we type in something in the quick repertorization tab the software will automatically record or directly record the rubric which is close to the keyword and has the highest number of remedies present so you can use this uh, option in rubrics where you know that you have only one option to select from or the most common option to select from and directly include it into your repertorization sheet so now i want to record spoonerism i will type spoonerism and you can see even before i have typed the entire word it is already present in my word suggestion so instead of typing the entire word you can directly click on the word suggestion that displays below and the word appears in our uh, quick repertorization tab after we've done selecting it i will click on this arrow which means record so after i do this the symptom is directly recorded now this uh, rubric is a small rubric and has only two remedies listed in it out of which we can see causticum is one of the few remedies moving on let us add on the remaining symptoms from our totality and see if this changes and the next symptom i want to record is desire for salt so again i will type it in my quick repertorization option first i will clear spoonerism and type salt desire and click on record you can see that the rubrics from generalities chapter under food and drinks salt or salty food desire has automatically been included now surprisingly causticum has become our first remedy which was the fourth remedy till we added spoonerism as a symptom moving on we have the last symptom in our totality which is aversion to sweets let us see after we record the symptom if the remedy changes or not again to record this rubric i will clear the selection from my quick repertorization tab now to record the symptom i will type the two important keywords which is sweet aversion and click on record so we are done recording all the symptoms that were present in our totality now you can see that amongst all the remedies we have uh, causticum 
as the remedy which is covering all our symptoms. However, we have other remedies like phosphorus, nitric acid and sulfur which are present in all the rubrics that we have recorded except for one which is spoonerism. Like I just said earlier, spoonerism is a very small rubric and has only two remedies. So, uh, and also spoonerism is one of the most important features of our case. So, let us have a look at the remedies present within the rubrics. Of course, one of them is causticum and see which is the other remedy. Now, to view the rubric, you can directly click on the rubric and you can see that the remedies listed under, under the rubric open up. So, under spoonerism, we only have causticum and china. So, this is very interesting. You can, you know, remember this that for a patient who has this uh, peculiar issue, you can only think of two remedies which is causticum and china. So, uh, we chose to prescribe causticum because of this one symptom that was only present in causticum amongst the other close running remedies as we thought that this was very very peculiar to our case. So, we gave the patient causticum 200 in repeated doses every night till the menses appeared. Now, uh, in cases of hypothyroidism, the remedy selection is important. But along with it, we must also tell the patient about certain diet restrictions and certain things that she can do in order to feel better. Like in case of hypothyroidism, we can tell the patient to have some physical activity included as this will also aid in weight loss and will also make the metabolism faster. Coming to the diet restrictions, we have certain things that the patient should not be eating or avoiding if there is hypothyroidism present. We can read about instructions related to diet and nutrition in homepathzomio through the utility tab where we can find diet and nutrition as the second option. We click on it and a new window opens which consists of 72 clinical conditions listed on my left hand side and the description on the right hand side. So, we can either scroll down or type hypothyroidism in the search bar and you can see that the first option, this is hypothyroidism or mixed edema is present as the search result. We click on it and now you can see that it has a description about what hypothyroidism is what could probably lead to hypothyroidism, what are the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism. So, you can see we can even find our symptoms of the case which is puffiness of the face, edema of the feet, weight gain, constipation, hoarseness of voice and uh, you know menorrhagia or menstrual disturbances present and as listed under the signs and symptoms in the case. Moving down, we find the dietary management which we were specifically looking for. So, here you can see that we have a list of foods to avoid like avoid goitrogens. Now, goitrogens are foods which block the utilization of iodine in the body. Goitrogens are found in turnips, cabbage, mustard, soya beans, peanuts, pine nuts and millets and cooking them usually inactivates these goitrogens. However, in foods like turnip and cabbage, even after the cooking, they have found that uh, the goitrogens have still been present in a large quantity, which is why it is very important to instruct your patient to avoid at least these foods if there is a case of severe hypothyroidism like we have in our patient. Maybe once the illness gets controlled, once the symptoms get reduced, you can ask the patient to have them in moderation and there will be no harm.
moving down we can see the list of foods that the patient must consume so the patient can increase the consumption of iodine as it is an important building block of thyroid hormone the patient must consume seafood milk meat sea plants uh, vegetables and plants that are grown in iodine rich soil are a good source of iodine so basically things that grow near the sea are generally that or the seafood generally contain higher amounts of iodine in them the patient must increase the consumption of copper selenium and zinc as these minerals are essential for normal thyroid hormone production and metabolism so you can also find uh, foods that are rich in copper so you have meat gelatin eggs yeast lamb pork quail duck goose squid salmon and organ meat which is basically to uh, these are the animal sources moving down we have plant sources like soy and soy products nuts and seeds beans legumes almonds broccoli garlic bran breads cereals etc copper is also found in dried beans like soy beans lima beans baked beans lentils and barley lastly you can also ask the patient to cook or use copper vessels as some amount of copper is obtained from cooking in copper vessels moving down we can find foods rich in selenium which are grains brazil nuts wheat germ or brewers yeast fish shellfish eggs red meat chicken and liver so basically in general if you if the person is non vegetarian you must ask the patient to eat a lot of meat shellfish um chicken liver so these are rich or rich in iron selenium magnesium copper all the micronutrients um coming down to the plant foods uh we do not have a lot of plant foods that contain selenium uh next we have zinc so good dietary sources of zinc includes again seafood uh in vegetarian foods you can have the ask the patient to have oatmeal uh nuts and seeds or milk and milk products um again fishes like shellfish crab and shrimp have a lot of zinc in them uh plant foods however are low in zinc so whole wheat grains provide a good amount of zinc lastly you can ask the patient to increase the consumption of protein because triosine which is an amino acid is a precursor for making thyroid hormone and this can be found in milk and milk products eggs which are the richest source flesh food meat fish and poultry uh so basically if the person is um someone who is a non vegetarian and eats both a combination of non vegetarian and vegetarian foods you can see that they will get a good combination of these uh, micronutrients that are essential for thyroid function but sometimes uh, we commonly see that if the patient is vegetarian or vegan they might not have a lot of things from the list of foods that we just uh, discussed so in such cases there is no harm in prescribing a multivitamin tablet to the patient which consists of selenium zinc copper so in this way you can be sure that the patient is at least getting all the essential micronutrients that are required for faster recovery in this case you can uh print the sheet out and even hand it over to the patient so that they can have a quick reference as in when they are confused about their dietary restrictions or the foods that they are supposed to include now uh, coming back to the remedy we gave the patient causticum so let us see what is the follow up after we gave causticum every night the menses came back within 2 weeks of taking the medicine thereafter we reduced the repetition to 2 powders per week 
along with SL200 TDS. And the tablet, which is Thyronorm, was tapered off by 25 units per normal menstrual cycle, making it to be taking 25 units every week to once a month and then eventually stopping it within 6 months. Now, it is very important to understand that even when you give a remedy to your patient and the patient is already taking thyronorm, you have to make sure that you taper it off gradually as sudden withdrawal of this medicine itself can further trigger the symptoms or worsen the case. So, sometimes when the patient starts feeling better and we withdraw the medicine, it is possible that it may worsen the case. So, remember, taper these medicines off gradually. There is no hurry to remove them out. After a year of taking regular treatment and tapering of thyronome, the patient was better overall. Her spoonerism had become better. The mood had improved. So, even though there was this constant sadness and despair, with our treatment, the patient herself told us, that now she feels more positive, more happy and more cheerful. So her approach towards her life had changed. Even though her situation did not change, she still was supporting her kids. She still was earning for them. And somehow she still was worried about their future. But she was taking it positively now. She was not worried or anxious or hopeless related to her state. She felt that things may become better one day. Uh, her menses had become regular. There was no hoarseness or bloating. And she also had lost 12 kgs in one year. So she was very happy. She said that now I'm feeling so much better. I'm even losing weight. So you can see that one single simple remedy that we prescribed based upon the symptoms that we thought were characteristic. We didn't do anything. We just took the totality converted it to rubrics and report rates. And we just compared the remedies as to see if it is covering all our symptoms or not. And we gave causticum. So you can see it is not even complicated. This was a very simple approach. We gave causticum to the patient. But you have to be patient. Okay, In cases like these, results may not happen suddenly. So even as a doctor, you have to understand that this is going to take time. And you also have to explain it to the patient because generally what happens is patient becomes very restless when they see gradual improvement. You have to explain it to them that this process is going to take a little bit of time. If possible, tell them how much time it could take. Do not give a specific time frame but tell them so that they are comfortable and they know that okay, I may take a while to become better. Since the problem has been there since a very long time, to remove it completely, to get the thyroid function back to normal, to taper off the doses of thyronorm and make sure that the patient is not taking it again, it is going to take a while. So do not hurry, do not worry, do not change the remedy frequently. If you feel that the remedy is acting and the patient is feeling better, Hold on to the same remedy. Repeat whenever you feel it is required. Otherwise, you can keep the patient on SL. So now you can see after one year, the patient had done a thyroid function test and she carried her report where her TSH had now become 1.87, which is absolutely normal. So if you remember when she had come to us in the beginning, she showed us a report where her TSH was 8 point something. And now after a year of treatment, only homeopathy treatment, discontinuing thyronorm, her TSH has gone back to absolutely normal. It is within the normal range and it is 1.87. So it explains why the patient has become better. Her symptoms related to hypothyroidism have gradually disappeared. And she has also managed to lose weight. Even though she has some more weight to lose, but now her weight loss has become much more easier as compared to when she came to us in a state of severe hypothyroidism 
where no matter what she did, she was not able to lose weight. So what do we learn from this case? We learned that while case taking, we must look into each and every detail of the patient. Even though we feel this is common to the illness or this is very common in people, we must still note it down because sometimes it may either guide us to the diagnosis or help us in differentiating our remedies. We learned that a soric case responds beautifully to an appropriate remedy. So here we saw all the symptoms in our patient were functional. There was increased sensitivity. Based on that, we selected our remedy and our potency and we repeated it accordingly. And the patient then started feeling better. In such cases, appearance of menses becomes a very important criteria for progress of the case, especially when we are treating a female who is in the fertile age. So that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this case as, as much as I did and you take home this learning and apply this to every case that we see in future and have faith that with homeopathy we can manage hypothyroidism and we can make the patient discontinue the long-standing medications, the allopathic medications that he has been taking. So I will see you again next time with an interesting case. Till then, take care of yourself.